Good afternoon. This is the first session covering our Maximo REST JSON API. This session is intended to be a getting started session. We'll introduce you to the basic topics around the API that will complement the documentation that you would have seen at the same location in the Maximo Wiki where you found this recording. So the Maximo JSON API became available um, in release Maximo 7602. And it's been incrementally improved in 7603 and will continue to be added on to in subsequent releases. So in terms of a history of our API or RESTful APIs, we started with an initial REST API that was really targeted towards users who were building external applications and wanted to submit form data to Maximo. And that REST API can accept query parameters, but for posting data, it can accept data in, in, as form data. And the response for both of those would include JSON data. The one thing it didn't support was pushing JCI to as part of a request or a post. After that, in the 7.5 release, we started introducing what we call the OSLC API. And this API is surrounding um, an IBM-driven standard called OSLC, which had a RESTful API in addition to other capabilities. The RESTful API portion is being used by Maximo Anywhere, the mobile solution, and we continue to support that and the prior REST API. But what we've evolved into is this new REST API, new JSON API. Think of it as a pure JSON API, using JSON on the request and the response, and although we still use some of the OSLC standards or capabilities, we've eliminated or made optional some of those extra things that OSLC brought to the table, primarily the namespacing it provided as well as the common vocabulary. So let me jump over to my Maximo here. So I'm in my Firefox and I got Maximo open in one of my tabs. I'm doing this in part to leverage the connection. So I'm going to Go to a second tab, and what I'm going to do is go to the root of the API, and you can see here, um, basically, I appended Maximo slash OSLC in the URL, and I bring up kind of the entry point of our API. Now, the one thing that jumps out right away, I was talking about namespaces. Everything here is namespace. This is kind of the default OSLC standard that we've always supported. We added a parameter called lean, and if you set it to true, which is a value of one, what happens is you do the same request and all that namespacing drops away. So for most of you, I would expect you'd want to use the lean equals one parameter and work with a kind of a clean uh, non-namespace JSON. When you set that parameter, um, it stays valid as long as you keep your connection open. So if you look at this, the result from this root API URL, there's a few different things here beyond integration. So the first one is the system info. Here it's just showing you, if you look at the bottom, it shows you some of the details of your Maximo environment, the version of TPay, version of integration, schedulers installed here as well. I'll skip API Meta. I'll come back to that in a minute. If I come down to who am I, this is the user I'm logged in as Wilson in our demo database. And this is information that goes with the user profile of this user. Going down further, the members, I'm in a, in a maximal deployment that's a single server, so there's only one server, one JVM. If you had a cluster a cluster of maximal servers, you could see all the different JVMs here. And then there's some other information about products and licenses and things like that. But let me jump back up here to API. So up here, this is the URL for um, integration or integration APIs. So if I, you know, basically it's the base URL with API meta on the end of it. So when I use this URL, it returns me a list of all the JSON resources that are out there in, in Maximo. And what that is, is basically all the integration and reporting object structures. And, and I should also say OSLC object structures that are in Maximo. I will scroll down and Look for MX, MX Asset. So here's MX Asset. And you can see it has some details about it. There's the name, um, 
Um, it's the use with, which is the uh, in the UI that would be the consume by. I have an authorized app, so the asset application is my authorized app. So if I look at this in my application, so this is the object structure application. There's my consume by, here's my authorized app. Obviously, the object structure name, that's the details it's providing me in the API. So in addition to that, the key thing here is the href, which is the URL specifically for this, this object structure. So um, by appending the object structure name to this, to the URL I started with, it'll give me everything for this specific object structure. So if I start at the top, there's a schema, so we provide a JSON schema. So if I click that guy, you can see, I'll scroll down a bit, you can see the different fields. It gives their their title, their length, their types. You know, there's a Boolean, um, upper, you know, all the standard stuff that you would see from um, the data dictionary, the DB configure app, or the max attribute table inside of Maximo. In addition, you see, so I'm scrolling down a bit, you see just, you know, some fields as I showed before, the authorized app, the uh, use with, um, the object structure name itself. And then there's two sections here. There's the creation factory down here, and then up above is the query capability. So these URLs, the creation factory is, the href in the creation factory is the URL that, um, Twist that open. I think I closed it there. That's the URL um, that you would use when you're doing a post. So when you're going to create an asset, you would post with that URL, and that would support creating an asset. You provide a JSON payload that had uh, enough data to create a valid asset. Up above here is the query capability. So the query capability is a couple of things. The first is the one named all. Every object structure will have one. This is the query that will give you a list of all assets. When you think of these URLs in this section, think of the, the list tab on the asset app. It's giving you a list of assets. Um, this one obviously is giving you all of them. Below this are three queries. These are saved queries within the asset application. And they're made available to use through the API. So if someone was using accessing Maximo from the outside, from an external application, they could query, let's say, IT stock assets much in the same way that you could use this query in the asset list, in the asset application on the list tab. When you use any of these URLs, you basically will get, by default, you'll get a list of what we call a collection of assets, a list of URLs for individual assets. So when you look at that URL at the end, you have what we call the resource ID after MX asset there. And that's the internal, kind of a converted value of the internal ID of the asset record. And that's what will take you to a specific asset. So I'll just pull one up just to briefly talk about it. Um, you can see obviously the asset numbers there and and basically what you're seeing here is all the properties of the assets. So this list is driven by the, just like integration, it's driven by the configuration and the object structure based on what persistent and non-persistent columns are marked as excluded and included. This, is, this list is driven from that. In addition, it has URLs that would take you to child objects. So this is an asset user cust. If you scroll down, there's the asset spec. Um, and below is asset meter. So if you click those URLs and if there's data there, you'll see you'll see um, a meter or you'll see you know specification attributes if if those exist. But other than that, you know you're basically getting all the data that has a value um, in Maximo from the asset object structure. Before we wrap up, I wanted to just throw out some reminders here um, of some of the stuff we just covered and and just point out a few things. First, again, the, the, the base URL or the root URL is listed there as the first bullet, and then the integration URL, the API meta. 
is, is for integration. I have a URL here. You can see our API documentation in Swagger if you just use a API HTML. So if I jump back to my Maximo, and what I'm going to do is go API.html, and it's going to build a list of all the resources that are defined in the system in this kind of nice format. If you're familiar with um, Swagger, you recognize the format. And you can see it lists all the object structures. Here's asset. And when you open them up, it gives you the different flavors of, of the operations. And when you open up, it, you, know, you can provide, actually provide values here and try it out basically you know and it shows you a lot of the parameters you can use here this would go hand in hand with the documentation that we have on the wiki page where we talk about these various parameters that you can use um, to help you with querying uh, data using the, using the API um, and a couple of reminders on, you know, the lean equals one parameter. You'll want to use that most likely. I didn't use it, but if you need to use the, uh, for testing, if you need to use the query parameters for the ID password, you can pass those in. So this OSLC web app URL system property should be configured with your host and, and port so that the URLs are properly built when you execute the queries with the API. And then the last bullet there is we have a Java library. Java client library in GitHub. Um, the easiest way to find is just Google Maximo REST Java client and you'll get to a page and if you want to dig through that, that information is available online. So this wraps up our initial session on getting started with our API. Please take a look at all the documentation we provided and provide us feedback as you work your way through the API. We'd like to hear it and hopefully um, you'll have good success with it. Thanks.